so hopefully you can quiet the grumblings of the stomach for long enough to, uh, to listen. But in many ways, this is a good talk to end both the lichen uh, section and the bryophyte section. Okay, now, okay, to end this uh, session for both the bryophytes and the lichens because both uh, subjects are being studied by people who are self-trained in, in large measure. And so um, what I would like to uh, talk about today is the state of biological exploration of California in the West and uh, the importance of the local catalog and the people doing, and the challenges that are, uh, the people are doing the work are facing. So first display the a status of floristic work in California and Western United States and uh, show why it's important to have local work being done and discuss those challenges uh, being faced by uh, these workers. And then we can talk a little bit about the possible roles of government, NGOs, and academia in improving these and uh, solving these problems. So it's important to see and everybody that's been talking about this, it's important to see that floristics, uh, especially with bryology, is a very young science in the Western United States. And uh, obviously the, the primary goals of floristic work are gathering all the taxa, everybody in the room knows these things, discovering the distribution, discovering species new to science, understanding the abundance and rarity of those taxa, so that these, we can deliver this information, this kind of conservation criteria to the appropriate people. We're making decisions about land use. None of these goals are close to being met in the Western United States. Because vast areas of the West are completely uncollected, and even heavily populated states need more work. So here's a quick map where it's showing where moss treatments are done in the Western United States. The fact of the matter is that most of these um, these works are relatively old, 1973, 19 in Oregon and Washington, Utah's again 1973, Arizona only has a checklist, Colorado has a nice little book that was published in 2007, um, Jim Shivak and Dan Norris published The Great Keys in 2004 and a catalog, um, and uh, several people are putting together, uh, updating the checklist um, from Nevada. So with the exception of Colorado and California, the youngest of these catalogs is 35 years old. There's a lot been happening in the last 35 years. And Ben showed that beautifully on the, in that graph. Liverworts are in even worse shape. Uh, California has uh, Doyle's works from uh, 2006. Uh, they were also treated in Colorado in 2007. And Oregon is in the final phases of putting together uh, a list and a flora. But that's it. That's not much of the Western United States. There's a, just a heck of a lot of work to be done. Now, here are states where there are active people really working at continuing floristic work. And you can see what do we have Montana, Idaho, Utah, Arizona. There's some people working in New Mexico, but they're kind of stranded on an island and, and floating in the breeze, and, and it's really difficult for them. Um, so we're, we're just doing a very poor job of getting this work done. Now let's look a little bit closer at California. Here is a map showing uh, where we have published studies of mosses or bryophytes in a particular zone. The blue is master theses, and red is in other publications. Not a very good job. Uh, and master theses are, are a particular problem. You can look at Lake County for a, a good example. When David Torrin published his mass, uh, master theses there, he had 151 species. He just recently submitted uh, an update on that with uh, showing 295 species in Lake County. <laughs> so he doubled the, his, his master's thesis. Now, where are local floristic studies being met, done now? And you can see that the map is kind of scattered a little bit, but there's, there's works 
being done. Um, and I'd then like to combine the two and show you what we have done and what's being done today. It's not a very good job. What is it? Maybe a fifth, maybe a sixth of the state being covered in biological surveys. So I'm a champion of the local floristic study. Why are they important? Well, a local floristic work has the same goals as floristic work on a larger scale. And local policy makers need the same information as uh, people on a larger scale do too. And local studies allow amateur people to do the work. And that's really, really important, and we'll see why a little bit later. And they force the investigator to look closely at a small area. So you, you, these are small plants. You've got to walk the trail in both directions to find them. You'll see different things on the way out than you do on the way in. It's amazing. So local floristic studies are really, really important to, to make these discoveries. So let's look at an, ex an example. I, in 2003, published a catalog of the mosses of Santa Cruz County. Of the 190 species documented, 105 had not been collected in the county before. Now, let's look a little bit closer at those 105. 91 were new to the county, and uh, of the other 14, uh, we have one new to North America. We have one name resurrected because of the work done in the state. One, two new to the state, and three new to science. Look at the proportion of new to science to, to new to the state and new to North America. That's amazing. And this is in Santa Cruz County. We're right near the heart of all the biological knowledge of the state. So let's do another. This is weird how this is coming out on this computer. Number of species described in North America since 1995 by state. In North America, 57 bryophyte species have been described since 1995. This is the last 20 years. 26 of those have been described from holotypes in California. That's 45%. So let's combine the two. With this map, with that piece of information, half of all the bryophyte species described in North America have been discovered with this much investigation. What is the potential? What is the potential? I mean, this is why Ben is so excited. We're all just drooling to go out and find new plants. With climate change and reduction of natural habitat from increasing population, we need baseline data and we need it now. So, the local floristic study, I believe, is the best vehicle to get that data, as well as discoveries of new species, geographic and ecological information, and the information planners need to make informed decisions about land use. So why is this coverage so poor? What are we doing wrong? In terms relative to other scientific studies, floristic studies are inexpensive. It's just a person going out and finding stuff. It's cheap, except for the time it takes to do the work. Field work and identification are also time intensive. So that makes them expensive for government or NGO landowners. So the logical conclusion then is to use unpaid amateurs to do a lot of the work. <laughs> and that's unfortunately. So let's look at who's doing the biological floristic work in California. It's easy. There's not many. We can count them on two hands. Less than half of the biologists have been paid for their floristic studies. And none have been paid for all of their floristic. More than half of the biologists in California who are doing floristic studies have no formal biological education. Thus, most of the people who are doing biological work are self-trained volunteers. People who have been caught with a virus. <laughs> so, these people have certain challenges that uh, Scientists, people who've been trained and have education at universities uh, don't have. And that is, they have to learn a whole new science. 
They have to learn how to be a scientist for that matter. They need access to a mentor. They need access to herbarium with reliably identified specimens. They certainly need a lot of time. They certainly need a lot of money. And they also have to face this fear of publication. I want to go through each one of these really quickly. They have to learn a whole new science with bryologists, and I'm sure this is the case with lichens as well. They need to look at a whole new scale, especially for bryophytes. You're talking about scales where a, a, an entire range may be a, a couple of square meters. Or some plants live in a, a groove in a rock, but not on the face of a rock. And this is a completely new way to look at the landscape. They also have to learn to recognize the three great basic groups of bryophytes, but that's nothing. That, that, that can be done in a day. But really, you need an access to a mentor. This is not something you can just pick up a book and learn yourself, because there's just too many terms, new language, there's new biology compared to vascular plants. You need a mentor for confirming your identifications. Pointing, uh, the mentor needs to point the student to the latest literature so that you can say, oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a new paper out on that subject. You can go look at that. That might help you figure this out. Um, certainly, a mentor needs to help you learn to uh, publish papers because the information you're gathering is useless unless it gets published. And the mentor needs to encourage the student, and that can't be just once a year. It's got to be ongoing. It's got to be a continual thing. I know. I've been through waves of this. I am one of these untrained volunteers. I don't even have a college degree at all. Now, here are, uh, 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 these stars are where there are herbaria in the west that have decent collections of bryophytes. If you're in Southern California, you have to drive eight hours to get to an herbaria. And someone said that um, they would like pictures of the bryophytes. Well, you have to have photomicrographs because these are things that you have to look at with microscopes as well. It's a challenging thing. So this is a really difficult problem, and it's going in the wrong direction because the, the, the good collection down in L.A. got sold to Berkeley, and, and the, the herbarium in Utah got sold to Colorado, and so it's consolidating instead of expanding. The unpaid biologist has to face the fact that this is an expensive hobby. I'm sorry to say, you have education expenses for seminars and short classes, Certainly collecting while you're driving around in your car and staying in hotels and whatnot is expensive. Microscopes, you're going to have to spend near a couple of thousand dollars on microscopes uh, to, to do your work. Uh, a library of, of biological books, I estimate I have somewhere around $4,000 in, in biological books on my bookshelves. Uh, and you, the unpaid worker also has to pay to publish his own work. I have spent somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,000 to publish papers in California. That publication is also a, a, a difficult thing for a non-scientist. You've got this fear of not looking scientific and <laughs> making mistakes and having incomplete data. This is a scary step to take, and, it, and, it, and it's something that has to be overcome to get this, this information out. So the problem is that we have the need for increased floristic work in the West, because there's no money to pay for workers. The workers have to be self-trained, and um, <coughs> academia, NGOs, and government do not have resources to help the volunteers. So what can be done to improve the situation? First, the recognize the problem. Government could do a better job of issuing collection permits. We had dickens of a time in, in Los Padres Natural Forest getting collection permits. Um, and give easier access to public lands to qualified collectors. Uh, those agencies could also allow or require staff botanists to survey for bryophytes and add their bryophytes to sensitive endangered species lists. So NGOs, well, CNPS is, is beginning to recognize non-flowering uh, plants. We have 43 bryophytes on the list as of uh, today. The local chapters need to make their members more aware of non-flowering plants. 
And uh, that could be said for clubs like the Sierra Club as well. We're trying to start a, a, a local chapter, not a local chapter, a Bri-Fi chapter uh, in CNPS, and that's a revolutionary <coughs> idea. We hope it flies because it would make things a lot easier for us. And um, land trusts need to bring biological surveys into their plan. So academia, though, here's the, here's the, here's the rub. Education of people with fl strong floristic skills. Floristics have been downgraded in the last 20 years. And um, that's, that's a serious problem. And you can see with that coverage, it's a, it, it becomes a problem as well. So we believe that the universities had to educate for government and NGO jobs as well as academic jobs. And again, I would like to equate floristic skills with other necessary skills. All of these studies are suspect if you don't know the plant that you're talking about. It's plain and simple. You can't make a study if you don't know the plant that you're talking about. I think it would be a great idea if, to get a degree, you had to have a, 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 a small floristic study, a small scale, a, corner, a small park, or a corner of a county, or a town, or something like that. Something that you had to go out and do a survey, and make identifications, make, learn to make proper collections. I, I think edu the universities need to have somebody in the faculty with strong floristic skills. I mean, that's not the case anymore. Um, maybe help find grants so that at least somebody, when they publish a paper, doesn't have to pay for it. Maintain an herbarium and get that, that data online. And here's an important one. Make literature accessible to the, to the amateur investigator. I can only find certain journals because I have a membership in the ABLS. Others I can't do. I, I, don't, I can't get into a university and, and get into their library and find these things. Training publics uh, available to the public. Uh, Jepson is doing a great job with that. Uh, the foray is another uh, that we're talking about. Um, and outreach programs to NGOs um, so that they understand the need and the, and the urgency of the problem. So they have, academia has challenges as well. Has to start with the student. Somebody has to be interested in the first place. And Part of the problem is there's no jobs to be had in bryology. And so why would you study something where you're not going to get a job? And maintaining your barrier in library is expensive. Grant money is a political animal, and right now the politics stick. Science is a bad thing as far as politics has goes right now. So in conclusion, we need to understand that floristics is a science equal to experimental sciences and worthy of funding. We need a recognition and acceptance of the present urgent need for biological floristic work on all levels in the West. And recognition of responsibility as agents of the state to train floristic workers. And we need to sell that awareness to the public so that the politics can change and get some money into the system so that this work can continue. That's it, thank you very much.